My name is Bruce Quinton. I'm from Pasadena, Newfoundland originally, and uh, I'm an associate professor at the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science uh, in the Department of Ocean and Naval Architectural Engineering. I have been teaching as a full-time faculty member since 2014. Um, I got my first start teaching in 2010 as a sessional instructor and again in 2011 as a sessional instructor. The kinds of courses I teach are design and analysis courses for engineering for ship structures, uh, ship structures that go into Arctic uh, harsh environments like that involve ice and finite element analysis. My teaching philosophy is uh, I believe that students are more motivated and interested in the course material if they can relate it to their own lives. What I mean is if they can see how what they're learning will affect their futures and their career and their career choices, um, then I believe that they will be more motivated to, uh, to study the material. I like to present uh, the concepts, concepts I'm teaching as if they're tools in a toolbox and they should know uh, when the tool is appropriate and what it's for so that they can use it appropriately. The part of teaching that I value the most is uh, interaction with students in the classroom and uh, after the students uh, have finished. So uh, I, uh, the part I value the most is when the students say, uh, you know, I found that really useful and uh, informative. And that doesn't always happen during the course that I'm teaching. It can quite often happen afterwards if we happen to meet uh, sometime after the course is finished. My initial reaction when I learned about remote teaching was uh, one of relief. Um, in engineering, we have a cohort system, which means that courses are only offered once per year for most of the program. And we have three semesters Per year. We have a, a full 13-week spring semester, which is unlike many of the other university programs. And of course, this pandemic started in the winter semester towards the end. And for us, that was just the end of one semester, moving on into another 14, 13-week semester in the spring. So it would have been a, a very large disruption to the engineering program if uh, we hadn't been able to continue teaching. I'm approaching remote instruction by taking advantage of as many of the electronic tools that are available to me as, as possible. So Memorial University has a, an online learning system uh, called D2L. And D2L is for specifically for remote learning. I've been using this system ever since I've been a teacher because uh, quite aside from remote learning, it's an excellent organizational tool for delivering a course. Uh, and it's an excellent place to post your lectures. It's an excellent place to post announcements because the students get a, a check mark when there's a new announcement post, posted so they get to see, uh, they get the notification and they can see what that is. Um, it's a great tool uh, for organization in general. All of my course notes we're already in electronic format long before the pandemic came. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a simple matter of, uh, you know, hosting the electronic format notes uh, to D2L and carrying on. Communication is uh, of the utmost importance for any remote learning environment. I communicate with the students through a number of means. The D2L shell, uh, the D2L tool that Memorial University offers uh, is, is again designed to do remote learning and any part of remote learning is not only delivering the material but assessing the logistics that go along with the course as well. Um, I found through discussions with students, through anonymous surveys and through just polling the class that a, a big student concern in the remote learning environment is actually just course logistics. Quite aside from you know, what's the course material and, and what am I going to be tested on. It's, you know, when is this assignment due? When is the material? Uh, when is the midterm? Uh, what lectures will the midterm be on? These are the kinds of things that in a classroom environment, they can ask in the middle of class or they can ask after class. The communication is a lot more straightforward in a, in a, in a classroom environment. 
in a remote learning environment, uh, the opportunity for communication is different and uh, the paradigm for discussion is, is different. Um, D2L is an excellent online learning tool because it offers an announcements tool which allows me to say, this, uh, here's your new assignment, it's just been posted, it's due uh, a week from Friday. Uh, it allows me to, uh, to say, here's uh, an interesting YouTube video that uh, goes along with the course material that I taught you in yesterday's class. Uh, also, there are a calendar feature, which is, again, uh, something that was shown to me by the students. The calendar feature will allow me to post the due dates, the class dates, um, when is the midterm, and this will all show up in a calendar format for the students. Teaching remotely is difficult. It's difficult for the students and it's difficult for the instructors. It's, it's difficult for everybody involved. One of the nice things about remote teaching and learning is the ability to record live lectures. So in normal in-classroom learning, there's always things going on where students might have to miss class and they're always dependent on other students to get the notes from that day or to make up in the best way possible. It's similar in remote learning. Uh, in remote learning, we have the new thing where we might have internet trouble unexpectedly. There's, there's any reason at all why a student might not be able to attend the class. And uh, I lecture in a live format uh, during the regular scheduled uh, time for the course as if it was an, uh, an in-classroom course. And uh, the, having the ability to record a live lecture and post that for the students, I think, is, uh, is one of the great things that came out of remote learning because I intend to carry that in, on into the future and, uh, and use that for when we get back into the classroom. Remote instruction has been, I think, quite challenging for the students. First of all, you're missing the classroom dynamic. The classroom dynamic means that me as an instructor, I can look at a student or the students and I can pick up on visual cues as to whether they're understanding what I'm saying or whether they need more explanation, whether I'm doing a good job or whether I'm not doing a good job. That's completely missing from a remote learning environment. So that means that as an instructor, I could be going on uh, without uh, having explained the topic uh, well enough. Another aspect is that instructors sometimes don't have the material in electronic format it, uh, as they're used to teaching uh, in uh, by you know, whatever methods they use that, that aren't necessarily in, necessarily in electronic format. And developing your course material and putting it into an electronic format is, in a, is, is quite a lot of work. So there is a, a struggle on both ends, uh, both the students and the instructors with remote learning. So the advice I would give to other professors is that I've learned that one of the largest worries that student have, students have is course logistics. Um, so they're not sure when things are due, uh, they're not sure uh, when the midterm is, they're not sure what they're going to be tested on. The advice I would give to students about remote learning is uh, if the lectures are available live, it's it's better to attend a live lecture than to watch a recorded lecture. Because in a live lecture, there's always the opportunity to ask questions and get a response immediately. Um, there's no temptation to skip ahead when we, uh, when we get to parts that we, we already understand. And we, therefore, we might miss uh, things that were interjected in between. So uh, also, if we put ourselves on a schedule where we're attending class regularly, uh, then we avoid the situation where we have a lot of recorded lectures to catch up on in a short amount of time, and that situation can occur. So my, in short, my advice would be, if there are any live lectures, it's, a, it's probably a good idea to attend them and participate. Once students are back in the classroom, there are certain things from remote teaching, I think, that will benefit the classroom experience. One of those is the recorded lectures. Uh, it's, it's commonplace to record lectures now. 
And doing this in the classroom would be little different than doing it when delivering it uh, remotely. Uh, the added benefit is that if a student misses the lecture or they just simply didn't get a topic the first time around, they can go back and view the recorded lecture. So going forward, I intend to keep recording my lectures live and posting them uh, for students to view.